Hi, my name's Phil. I like to talk about politics and with the bad news continuing to roll in for Boris Johnson's government, the distractions are not going away either. So in order to crowd the news of our deepest recession amongst advanced economies out of the news, Priti Patel has stepped up her attack on refugees by picking a fight with ice cream. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So no getting away from the dairy today, is there? We started off with cheese, we ended up with ice cream. Sounds like a good day to me. So basically, first of all, we had Nigel Farrell shouting at the sea. Now we've got Priti Patel picking a fight with ice cream, arguing with ice cream. And it's like these xenophobes are incapable of de debating with real people. So they have to pick fights with inanimate objects. It's on their intellectual level, perhaps. So what is this fight with ice cream then? Well, Ben and Jerry's decided to take the Home Secretary and her ilk to task over some of the language and claims she was making concerning asylum seekers, which was at times about semantics, really, but also the legal facts of the matter, which were much more important, much more relevant, to which all Pretty Patel could come back with was by saying, oh, your stuff is overpriced junk food anyway. Like, yeah, they, were, they weren't talking about ice cream. They're just an ice cream company. But the fact that you then have to try and turn it into ice cream means you have no arguments for what they're claiming. Now, I'll deal with the language bit first because this is something I'm not necessarily in agreement with Ben and Jerry's over, but I don't necessarily disagree either. Um, so they attack the term illegal immigrants. Now, if I were going to attack that, you know, in terms of the general discussion that's going on at the moment, I would point out the fact that if they are asylum seekers, they're not illegal immigrants because international law for some time has said, well, obviously, if you're fleeing persecution or war, something like that, um, then to seek asylum somewhere may mean that you have to go through unorthodox routes and that, you know, that can't prejudice you. So you're not an illegal immigrant if you're an asylum seeker. Um, but what they were trying to point out is the fact that a person cannot be illegal. You know, you've got immigrant and illegal immigrant means, well, the immigrant is illegal. Well, a person can't be illegal. An act is illegal not a person. Now, I would say to that, that, you know, we understand what's meant by that. I don't think people really think that it's the person that's illegal. Um, every, it's a term and people understand the term. However, I am happy to accept the fact that it's a clumsy term that doesn't actually make sense, really, um, and if the main point is by saying, well, why don't we use more accurate language, fair enough. Fair enough. But they also made the point in their thread, which I'll link in the description below if you want to have a look at it yourself, that these people wouldn't need to flee wars, climate change and torture um, via these methods that the Home Secretary is complaining about if we opened up safe routes of passage. The reason they have to do this is you know, the reason they're having to take the action that the government are calling illegal is because they put in place a, ways to restrict them being able to make those asylum claims. So basically, it's our government forcing them to have to take these routes. So it's their fault. If you don't want them taking these routes, then you open up safer routes. Perfectly simple. But then we had an interesting poll, in fact, a couple of polls on YouGov. And again, I had to take people to task. I'm going to say this again. Um, because You get the usual thing when someone sees something they don't like in a YouGov poll. Or in any poll, people tend to be like this. Uh, they see something they like and they plaster it everywhere. They see something they don't like. Oh, uh, it's owned by Tories. YouGov is a private polling company like all the other polling companies. And yes, it is owned by a Conservative supporter. There's nothing political about it. YouGov is, along with Ipso Mori, the only, one of the only two polling companies in this country that produces accurate polls. Now, yes, they take private commissions as well. And, those, and, and private commissions will be fiddled by any polling company because it's their job to fiddle them. Forget about those. We're talking about their own shop window here. The proof of the pudding is in the eating. YouGov not only publish the detailed methodology of their uh, of the way they do things, which is then open for expert statisticians to go, yeah, the way they do it is actually very valid, which it is. But also, the, along with Ipso Mori, the only one who accurately predicts the results of elections, because that's where you can say, is it accurate or not? 
do you get election results right? They do. They do. That's all. The, and no other polling company does. Uh, consistently anyway. Sometimes it's a bit hit and miss. Theirs is always consistently on the button. So YouGov are... When, you, when you're looking at stuff that hasn't been commissioned privately, it's good. Um, and we, we will accept it. Now, as I say, a couple of polls that they've done, uh, which are actually really interesting. And there were two that I want to sort of look at. Both are on perceptions when it comes to what the government are trying to call a migrant crisis. It's not a crisis, of course. So a migrant row is what I would call it. And um, one of them is on sympathy for refugees which is, of course, because it's perception-based and purely perception-based, entirely subjective, but it is what it is. And the other is on how much we do to help. Now, the poll was based on perceptions and therefore subjective, but it can be measured objectively. So the first one shows that there are slightly, there's a slightly greater proportion of the population that lacks sympathy for the refugees being discussed. Now, that doesn't sound very compassionate, Phil, does it? You were saying we're a compassionate country. No, it doesn't sound very compassionate. Now, what I would say on this one is, of course, bear in mind the lies and dehumanisation that the British media have pushed on the public. And still, it is still slightly lower than half the population say they lack sympathy for these refugees. But then we look at the breakdown. This is where it does get interesting. And I would be interested in further examination of this. So you can see here that Labour voters are overwhelmingly sympathetic. Conservative voters are overwhelmingly unsympathetic to the tune of the same proportion. Now, this makes sense because selfish people are drawn more towards the Conservatives. I'm not saying all Conservative supporters are selfish, but selfish people are drawn towards the Conservatives. And those with a, more of a social con conscience are more drawn to Labour. Like I say, I'm not saying you don't get selfish people in Labour. You bloody well do. And I'm not saying you don't get compassionate people in the con supporting the Conservatives. You do. But, you know, just in terms of the overall balance. Then we look at the old Brexit polarisation. Now, this is interesting. So, as you might expect, uh, a, a significant majority of Remain voters do have sympathy for the plight of these refugees. Now that makes sense to me because at the end of the day, someone who believes in the EU is much more likely, not certain, much more likely to be of my mind, where you like to think of yourself as a citizen of humanity. You know, a citizen of the human race. Leave voters the other way around. Now, as there's that interest in 73. 73% of leave voters have not much or no sympathy for these refugees, just like 73% of the Conservative voters. But the, for the Remain one, it's not reversed. It's only 67%. Now, why would that be? Because there's different reasons to, to want to remain in the EU. Just like there are different reasons for leave, but I think they're much more, um, there's a much bigger split in, in Remain. And I think this poll shows that. There are people who would identify as Remain you know, wanting to remain in the EU. It's too late now, rejoin, I suppose, but, you know, would have been called Remainers. Um, some of it is pragmatic. They just know that it's very damaging for the country for us not to be in there. Um, but for some people like myself, there is that side of it, but there's also the, the fact that you get to feel part of a larger collective. Again, it's that greater connection to humanity in general. The EU represents a much larger group of people. You don't... I don't like tribal nationalism. So any st political state of affairs that moves away from that, and the EU is a classic case, is great for me. But not everyone who wanted the UK to remain in the EU is of that mind. It, you can get people just from selfish national um, ideals because the UK benefited from being in the EU. So that was interesting, I thought. And, and, and I thought to myself, then I thought to myself, well, hang on a minute as well. So... These people, for example, so the 73% of Labour voters, people identifying as Labour voters, that have sympathy to the, to the refugees, and the 73% of Conservative voters who say they lack sympathy for the refugees. Is that just down to the fact that these people would naturally have those feelings towards refugees and therefore align themselves with those parties? Because there is another explanation. What if, for example... The disparity is caused by the fact that, like I said, the reason why you have this particular lack of compassion for refugees in this country, whereas I think we we generally have a lot of compassion. As I say, if something terrible happens somewhere in the world, like Beirut, for example, there is a lot of sympathy for that. 
notable amount of sympathy for that. The lack of sympathy is particularly for those people affected by terrible events, many of which we caused, coming over here. It's the NIMBY attitude, isn't it? Oh yes, absolutely something should be done for these people. I have a massive amount of sympathy for them. I just don't want them coming over here. Someone else should deal with them. It's that attitude. And, and, and the reason we have that attitude is because the media push on to us the fact that there's a crisis. Always it's a crisis, a crisis, a crisis, a crisis. It's not a crisis. Now, and I think to myself, right, is the reason you've got this difference in attitude and sympathy in the Conservatives and Labour Maybe because if you're, a, you know, if you vote conservative, maybe you're the sort of person that reads this right wing gutter press trash. And that not only encourages you to vote conservative, but also encourages you to lack sympathy for these people. And maybe if you're more, if you don't read that sort of trash, of course, you're more like you're less likely to vote conservative, therefore more likely to vote Labour. And of course, you're not going to be poisoned by this toxic attitude towards refugees so is it nature or nurture is basically what i'm asking i think that's quite interesting but then there was another poll very quickly this one because this is easy um now this one was about how much help we give and again was perception based compared to our european neighbors so this yougov poll found that about 60 40 sorry 46 percent of the british public think that the uk has done more than other european countries to help refugees well, I think you'll find we actually do more than others. We do more than our fair share, is the attitude. Now, again, this poll is based on perception, but it can be tested objectively, because do we do more? No, no, we don't. Of all asylum claims dealt with by the EU, the UK has accepted 6.1% of them. Germany, 22%, France, 17%, Spain, 16%. Even much smaller countries like Greece, 10%. Um, when you look at actually the, the asylum claims dealt with, the UK uh, does very poorly. And actually, when you look at it as a proportion of our population, if you accept that countries with a larger population can absorb more refugees and therefore should help more refugees, um, when you base it on that, on, on terms of per capita effectively, we do very, very badly. Far from doing more than our neighbours, we demonstrably, provably do less. We are extremely bad international neighbours to the other nations of humanity. But like I said, this perception, the reason it's wrong is because it has been deliberately steered wrong. The media are supposed to inform us about the state of affairs. They do the opposite. Most of the media deliberately try and steer us off course from reality. And, and it's that media machine that breeds hate as a way of distracting us from the policies that they push that makes all of our lives worse. But there it is. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. If you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.